Hallelujah. Yes, give him another hand clap. That was awesome. Praise the Lord. We are clean. Amen. Praise the Lord. Our sins are washed white as snow. They were like crimson, and now they're white as snow. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to receive our tithes and offering. Uh, um, later on today in our service, we are having our communion. So if you don't have your communion cup, when we do our communion, just raise your hand. We'll make sure you have one. And at home, be prepared to do communion with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Our willingness to give freely shows our deep trust in God. It shows that we are depending on him and that we acknowledge that he is the provider of all our needs. Amen. The Bible says that he provides all our needs according to his riches and glory. Giving also shows that we prioritize God above all else. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. In other words, he is number one. There is no doubt about that. If we were watching a football game, we could debate and say, this guy's top three, or he's top ten, and you may say he's number one. But that is there. But here, know that there's no other. God is number one. Tell your neighbor he's numero uno. This helps us from the love of money, knowing that he's number one. Amen. You can't serve two masters. You either love God or money. Money can't buy you salvation. It may not buy you peace. It may not buy you um, healing. But God can give you eternal life. He, his grace can give you salvation. He could heal, heal you. He could give you peace beyond all understanding. One of the richest person in the world died of cancer um, the the founder of Microsoft all his money that and all the money he used to, uh, to buy his health and even his salvation didn't work amen so seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and know that he is number one I want to give you a couple of verses in Deuteronomy 8, 18. You shall remember that the Lord, your God, for it is he who gives you the power to get wealth. For it is he that gives you the power to get money, wealth, happiness, and all these things. Amen. And Proverbs 3, 9. We all know this. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of all your crops. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. We trust in you, Lord, and we depend on you for everything, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you provide all our needs according to your riches and glory. We seek you first in all things, Lord Jesus. Because we seek you, Father, we have our priorities right, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Father, that we choose you, Father, that we do not serve two masters, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you give us what money can give us, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for every giver here, Lord. Thank you for blessing their homes and their family, Father, and everything they put their hands to, Lord. We thank you that because of them, everyone that gives, our church is blessed, Father. And everything that we get here, Father, give us wisdom and discernment, Father, to be good stewards of everything we get, Father. And, and may it maximize and multiply for your kingdom, Lord. We thank you and love you in your mighty name. Amen. Thank you, brothers and sisters. God bless you.
took me so long to believe it That you choose someone like me To carry your victory Perfection could never earn it You give what we don't deserve it You take these broken things and to glory You are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated Every battle you won I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I With the one who has conquered it all Now I can finally see it You're teaching me how to receive it Let all the striving teach This is my victory Lord, hallelujah, 
Let's give him the highest praise. Hallelujah. Close your eyes with me for just a moment. Today's the first Sunday of the month of April. It's the first Sunday after the celebration of Easter Resurrection Sunday. And already you can tell that the year is beginning to slip away so quickly. Already you can tell that things move at such a pace that at times you feel you can't get a grip on things or handle things well. So quickly things can change from one second to the next. You're doing fine and then you're having a medical emergency or you're just driving down the street then you find yourself in an accident. So quickly things can happen. And we need to be solid in Christ. Because on this side of glory, meaning that on this side of heaven, meaning that before we go to be in heaven with our Savior, in this world we're going to go through things. God never promised us an easy path, but He did promise that He would never leave us nor forsake us. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if you're wondering where God is at times, if you're wondering why He's allowed things to come your way, I pray that your heart remains prayerful and faithful. Never be angry with God. Never curse God. Never blame God because he has promised to be with us through thick and thin we are going to go through challenges we are going to go through seasons of darkness dry seasons 
dark seasons. We are going to go through pains and struggles, disappointments, and at times we may even be disheartened and discouraged. And the enemy is trying to get you to a place of depression or a battle with anxiety. That you've got to remain strong in Christ and know that God is with you through yes, thick Lord. and yes. thin. You need to praise Him in the dark times. Yes, Lord. Praise Him in the hard times. Praise Him in the sad times. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. Because He is worthy of it at all times. Yes, You'll Lord. begin to feel yes, yes. the presence of God in your life. Yes. You'll begin to feel the joy of the Lord in your life. You'll begin to sense hope once again living and rising within you. And you will see the presence of God in your life. You are not alone, believer. You are not alone, believer. Hallelujah. You are not alone, believer. Hallelujah. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. 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 Faithful is our God. Great is our God. Yes, Mighty yes. is our God. Lord, Hallelujah. Lord, Hallelujah. Holy is our God. Hallelujah, oh, we Lord. love you, Lord. We praise you. Hallelujah. For you are worthy. Oh, God, we thank you, Jesus, this morning. This morning that you're here in the midst of us. This morning you're here right now, God. You're touching us, blessing us, strengthening us, encouraging us. Right now you're doing a transforming work in our minds and in our hearts right now. Come on, for those of you that will believe this morning, right where you are, make it an altar. This is a movement of deliverance that God is blessing our church with this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah you need to be determined that you will walk out of here delivered and set free of bondage and addiction right now. Sadness and depression must go. Anxiety must go. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, that craving for that vice oh, must go now in Jesus' name. Yes. Be set free in the name of the Lord. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 That dark cloud that hangs over you. Gone in Jesus' name. Yes, yes. Hallelujah. Let your mind be renewed and be transformed now. Hallelujah. For you are a new creature in Jesus Christ. Yes, Lord. You are washed in the blood of the Lamb. You are set free of bondages and addictions. Hallelujah. Joy is rising up in you now. Yes, joy Lord. is rising yes, up in yes. you now. Hallelujah. The Hallelujah. joy of the Lord. It's your strength that you need this morning. Yes, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Holy is your name. Yes, yes, Holy yes. is your name. Declare the name of the Lord over your life. I declare the name of Jesus over my life right now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. For the one that's in here needing a healing touch. For the one that's watching, and there are several needing a healing yes. touch. Receive healing now in the name of Jesus. Receive now by faith. And this is how you do it. You say, thank you, Lord. Yes. I receive your healing. Yes, I receive your restoration. I receive yes, the work of the blood of Christ in my life right now. Body line up to the word of God. Yes, Mind Lord. line yes. up to the yes. word of God. Heart line up to the word yes. of God. In the name of Jesus, yes, Jesus, I declare the presence of God yes. over me. I declare the yes. healing of God over me. I declare the restoration yes, of God over me. In Jesus name. Yes, name. In Jesus name. In Jesus' name, Lord. Again, keeping your eyes closed. This is Communion Sunday. And in a moment, we're going to go into a deep study on the power of communion and what it means and where it comes from and why it's important. This morning is a morning of deliverance. This morning is a morning of salvation. Today is a morning of restoration. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're in the month of April, and we're beginning what we call Focus Week today. And if you did not know, that begins today with communion. Tomorrow, I invite you to fast one meal and spend 15 minutes with God. Do the same on Tuesday, one meal and spend 15 minutes with God. And then on Wednesday, come back here for a night of worship and prayer in Jesus' name. And the purpose of Focus Week is so that we can recalibrate our spirit man with God. So much happens in our day and our weeks that distract us and pull us away from God. So many things that we put our focus on and our attention on and we spend our energy on things that don't glorify the Lord. So today's a day of repentance. Believer, you've come here today and God has 
had you to be here for the reason of repenting before him for the things we've done against the Lord for how we've ignored him and stood against him disobeyed him father forgive us today forgive me Lord say that forgive me Lord of every sin and trespass against you forgive me God for where I thought of it the wrong way spoke about it the wrong way acted out the wrong way forgive me Lord I want to be restored this morning I want to be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb this morning. I want to be made whole this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I want my spirit man healed this morning. My natural man healed this morning in the name of Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Strengthen Hallelujah. my walk with you, God. Strengthen yes. my faith Lord. with you, O oh Lord. Strengthen my trust in you, God, this yes. morning. In the name of Jesus, I want to be a disciple. I want to be a studier. I want to be a follower. I want to walk submitted to you, God, in the name of Jesus. Today, hallelujah, is the day of salvation. Today, oh God, is the day of restoration. And Lord, I worship you. I praise you. Hallelujah, that you hold me in the palm of your hand, oh God. Thank you, God, that you've encamped angels of protection around me. Thank you that you hold and sustain me. Thank you, God, that you are my provider. Thank you, God, hallelujah, that you calm the waters. You calm the winds. Thank you, God, for your mercy and your grace now. Thank you, Lord, hallelujah. Thank you, God, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Tell the Lord, thank you, Lord. Thank yes, you, God. Lord. Thank, you, Lord. thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I thank you this morning. You, I worship you this morning. I praise you this morning. For holy is the name of our God. Yes. Yes. You're doing a new work in me. Come on, declare that over yourself. You're doing a new work in me. A new work in my mind. A new work in my heart. In the name of Jesus, you're doing a new thing in me. And I thank you, Lord. Yes, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. For you are holy. You are holy. You are holy. Give the Lord a hand of praise. Do me a favor. Walk around. Greet one another. Say to that person, I thank God for you when you shake their hands. Come on, walk around. Do that now. Say, I thank God for you this morning. I thank God for you this morning. Introduce yourself to someone you may not know. A couple of new faces here this morning. We welcome you to church. We welcome you to Faith Point. Thank you for joining us today. If you're watching online on Facebook and YouTube, thank you for logging on and being a part of our service. Stand up and participate with what God is doing here today. I thank you. I thank God for you. Tell them, I thank God for you. You're a blessing. Thank you for being here today. God is with us. God is with us. God is with us this morning. Hallelujah. A few of you snuck in last minute. I'm glad to see you. I'm glad to see you. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Man, God bless you. How's it going? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. How awesome it is to be in the house of the Lord this morning. How wonderful it is to be here today. This is the day the Lord has made, amen. Let's rejoice and let's be glad in it today. Our God is good and our God is great. His presence is with us today. There's a miracle in this place for you today. Hallelujah, don't feel alone. Don't feel abandoned, don't feel neglected. God is with you and God loves you. He knows who you are. He knows who you are and he loves you today. Amen. You're at the right place at the right time. God's going to do a great work in us and through us and for us. Amen. Praise the Lord, God. We thank you. Holy is the name of the Lord. Holy is the name of the Lord. Hi, guys. Hi, hi. <laughs> Amen. God is here. Lay it all down. Don't go out with the same stuff you brought in. Amen. Lay it down at the foot of the cross. Give it to Jesus. Know that he will hold you and sustain you. Hold you and sustain you. God is our provider. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Speak the name of Jesus over your life. Speak the name of Jesus over your family, your marriage, your relationships. Speak the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, Lord. Glory to your name. Hallelujah. Who's glad you came to church this morning? Amen. You're glad you're here. It's a beautiful day out. Praise the Lord. You may be seated. Worship team, you did a great job this morning. Let them know you love and appreciate them. Thank you, thank you. The flag team, amazing flag presentation, amen. So diligent. Easter was last Sunday, and I want to thank all of you that were able to come out and be a part of it. And um, I wish all of those that came were here again. Those are what we call the CEOs, Christmas and Easter only, amen. And, uh, but praise God, I pray they came and got a message from the Lord and that the resurrection power is living in us today. Say amen. amen. It is living in us today. Praise God. Well, I want you to turn to Psalm chapter 23. As I mentioned while we were praying a moment ago, today begins what is called our focus week. Again, if you don't know what that is, it is something that the Lord spoke to me a few years ago that we should do as a congregation, beginning with the very first Sunday of the month, which is traditionally Communion Sunday. And so beginning with Communion Sunday, we partake of the Lord's table today. Tomorrow, Monday, and then Tuesday, I ask you to fast one meal, put it in your alarm on your phone, so that when you wake up, it says on there, fast one meal. It could be whatever meal you want it to be. If you say breakfast, don't sleep till noon. Amen? You got to get up and fast. And I want you to turn all distractions off and get away from anything that is a distraction to you. And I want you to sit and give God 15 minutes, whether you read your Bible for 15 minutes, whether you listen to worship music, and that's the only electronic you can have for 15 minutes, or maybe you sit in silence with the attitude of God, speak to my heart. Amen? With the attitude of God, speak to my heart. Give God 15 minutes on Monday and on Tuesday, fasting one meal, and then on Wednesday we come back for a time of prayer and worship. And what this is for is for, again, calibrating, realigning our spirit man with God. How many of you know very, very quickly and very, very easily distractions pop up? Amen? It could be a text. It could be a call. It could be something you saw. It could be something you remember. And, and what's amazing is that when you dedicate time like this to God, you never have such an urge to do laundry. All of a sudden, you got the energy. Now that it's time to put some time aside for God, you get energy to start doing stuff. All of a sudden, you're like, you know what? I want to scrub down my hubcaps. And you've never thought of it, but now that it's time for God, the devil starts giving you ideas and thoughts, and then you start getting inspiration. It's uh, practicing the fruit of the Spirit, and we spent several weeks at the beginning of the year talking about it. The very last one is self-control. Did you hear that? The fruit of the Spirit is self-control. Control. So a lot of times as Christians we think, well, God needs to do it in me. If God, you want to see a change in me, well, then you do it. Did you know you have to participate in that changing plan? You have to educate yourself in the Word of God. You've got to spend time in prayer, spend time fasting. And, and this is what fasting is for. Fasting is to help you gain self-control. Because maybe you started that diet, now fasting time comes around, and now you want, and someone brought an apple fritter, and it's sitting next door. And as I'm speaking to you, it's in my mind that it's sitting next door. Right now, I want that fritter, right? It tastes good. But you've got to practice self-control and put yourself under um, the alignment of God's word, amen? So the other reason for fasting is that Jesus gave the example of when he was with the disciples and they were casting out demons, the disciples came across someone that they were not able to cast out a demon from. And they turned to Jesus and they said, why can't we remove or cast out this demon spirit? And Jesus said, this kind comes out only by prayer and fasting. So it reveals to us that there are levels of anointing or levels of consecration or levels of requirement that you and I must be prepared for. So the fasting I'm inviting you to do, which is just one meal, because at the beginning of the year, and we did it in January, we fast for two weeks, right? And so to get to a place where you can fast for two weeks, I encourage you to participate in these quick, small fasts 
so that you can develop the discipline in your mind, in your body, in your spirit to be able to participate in fasting. Amen? So please be a part of that. It'll help you realign and regather the mess this year has already become for some of us. And we're entering tax season, so that's a great challenge for some of us. Amen? A hurdle to get over. There's a lot of things that we face, and I'm doing this and encouraging you to do this so that you can get your spirit strong. Amen? So this morning, I want to talk to you about the power of communion. Every once in a while, every few months, I like to bring up that, this topic on Communion Sunday because communion is extremely powerful. It's not just something that we do religiously, and some of us come out of religious backgrounds or religious religions, and we have a particular teaching, or we sometimes just take it for granted, or we just go through the motions. But I want you to know that everything that we do in Christianity has a purpose, and there is a reason for it, and it is the purpose of elevating us to be more like Christ. That's why we're here today. We're trying to get to be more like Christ. Now, we cannot do it in our own strength. But again, we must physically, emotionally, intellectually participate in it along with spiritually. Amen? So communion is extremely important to the believer. Let's go to Psalm 23. I'm reading out of the New Living Translation. Follow along with me if on your device or on your paper printed Bible. Uh, on verse 1 it says, and it's a very popular portion of Scripture. The Lord is my shepherd. I have all that I need. Say that with me. I have all that I need. You are declaring it. Amen? It doesn't say I have all that I want. Amen? So let's go back to self-control. Let's go back to the verse, and I read this all the time, that says seek first the kingdom of God, meaning seek after the things that are about God. And then the Bible says, and then everything else will be added to you, meaning that God will provide those things. God will provide what you need, and God will provide at times what you want, as long as what you want lines up to the plan and will of God for your life. And let me tell you, that's what you want. You want the things that line up with God and His purpose for your life. Because if it's not in God's plan for you, it will become the distraction and the destruction of you. Amen? So you want those things to be completely lined up with God. Verse 2. He lets me rest in green meadows. He leads me beside peaceful streams. Right? So God is about bringing a lifestyle of peace to us. God wants you to stay out of the trouble of your family. Say amen. Come on. For those of us that are Hispanic, there's always that one tia pia that's always stirring the pot. And some of you might be that tia pia stirring the pot. Amen. But God wants us to have a lifestyle of peace and tranquility. So you don't get involved with gossip. You don't participate in it. You don't go looking for the tiki tiki. Oh, give me not just the crumbs, but the whole loaf. Come on, girls, spill it. No, you, you walk away from it. You, you disconnect from it. You, you find a place of rest. Maybe the, the people you're with are not glorifying God, and little by little, they'll, they'll, they'll attract you and pull you in. You've got to learn to separate yourself from them. You've got to go through your social media, and maybe you've got to unfriend some people, unfollow some people, because they're bringing distraction to your peaceful life. Amen? Just because you're related does, by blood does not mean you have to be there. Amen? Because Jesus said, my family are those that do the will of God. So if you study that and analyze it, you realize that those that are not doing the will of God are not your family. And that's something that's a little difficult to hear at times. Because we're, you know, all about family. Some of our cultures here are all about family. But how many of you know that sometimes family can rule you? Sometimes family can squish you. Amen? Sometimes family can destroy you. And you're trying to get somewhere in life, and family is holding you back. So Jesus said it best. My family are those that do the will of God. You've got a decision to make. 
If you're going to make it to the next level in God, if you're going to go the whole distance of your life with God, if you want to make it, if the rapture was to happen and the trumpet was to sound, you need to make decisions that keep you in line with God above all else. So here, he lets us rest in green meadows. He leads us beside peaceful streams. Look what it says in verse 3. He renews, say renews. He renews my strength. He guides me along right paths. Did you know that God is always showing us the right way to go? And we've got to submit to him so that we can go down that path. I don't know about you, but I'm a personality that I really don't enjoy too much being told what to do with the basic things of life. Amen? I know I've got to call the doctor. I know I've got to go and see him. I don't want to be told what to tell him. And my wife and I have a joke. She's always telling me how I need to speak to the doctor, for example. I want you to go and tell him, doctor, and then she starts giving me, and she'll even do a man tone on her voice. And I'll be like, I don't need that much training, girl. Amen? It's interesting, but we can sometimes bottle up and harden up when someone comes and tells us what to do and how to do it. And, and our life with God is about being surrendered to Him to the point that we hear the voice of the Lord through the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And we need to give in to the Holy Spirit. We need to surrender to Him and follow His lead. He's giving us good paths to walk. But some of us, say some of you, tap your neighbor and say, listen up, I think he's talking to you, have a tendency to lean towards the things that are a little bit dangerous, a little bit troublesome. You know that that topic is going to stir some mess with that person and press some buttons and you still bring it up. That God is wanting to lead us down good and right paths. And look what it says, why for the Lord does that. I don't know if that's proper grammar, but... Why for does God do that? Amen? To bring honor to his name. Amen? We need to live a life that brings honor to him. So the decision you need to make, let it be the decision that honors God. Don't let it be the decision that's going to put more money in your pocket just because. Don't let it be the decision that makes you more famous, more popular, more seen getting more followers on your social media because this is what everyone's doing and this is what I should do. Let it be the decision that you know is going to bring honor to God. And sometimes those decisions bring absolutely no attention to you. No one sees that you did this. No one, no one realizes and acknowledges that you, you made a decision that's going to honor God. People will, you go on with people not even knowing anything about it. But God's name will be glorified, and you will be blessed and provided for for it. You have to set yourself up, amen, to be blessed of God. Don't wait on anyone else to do it. Look what it says in verse 4. Even when I walk through the darkest valley, who's ever been in a dark valley? Sad time, hard season, low in health, low in finances, low in friends, low in motivation, low in inspiration, battling with anxiety and nervousness and insecurity and fear. But look what the Bible says, because we're all going to go through those moments. Don't think that being a Christian removes you from those experiences, because the truth is, is that you are a human creation of God living in a broken world and a broken system. There is no political party that has the right answers for all things. Only Jesus is the answer for all things. Amen? Because you can have meeting after meeting and plan after plan and treaty after treaty. And eventually, there's a corrupt heart in the group that brings destruction to it. That's why every heart must be touched by Jesus. Amen? And even those of us, come on, that have had our hearts touched by Jesus, we sometimes struggle and go the wrong way. But the Word of God here says that even when I walk through the darkest valley, look what the Word says, I will not be afraid. Now how many of you know that we read that, we praise God for it, but the truth is we do feel fear? Amen? But you need to declare it that God, even when I'm scared, I will not be afraid. You understand? So it, it's something that God is doing in us. 
It's something that only God can do and produce in us because you're going to feel that fear, that emotion of fear for whatever it can be. But you've got to declare to your spirit, man, that even while your natural man is battling fear and anxiety, you declare in your spirit, man, I will not be afraid. I will stand on the Word of God. I will stand on the promises of God. I will trust in God and rely in God and lean on God and look to God. And yet I'm battling fear. But your spirit, man, as you put the Word of God in you, as you come to church and lift your hands and worship God, and as you take time to fast and, and do the things that I'm offering you to do, you're working on conditioning and preparing your spiritual man to be strengthened. And, and here's something that you might not realize. You're going to get through the battle. Say amen. You're going to come through it. You're going to come out of it because God is with you. You may not look like much coming out. You may look tore up from the floor up, messed up all kinds of ways, amen. Battle weary and twitching a little bit as you're coming out of it. But you're going to come out. Hallelujah. You're going to come out and all glory and praise will be to Jesus. And it's going to strengthen your testimony. Amen? It's going to strengthen your testimony. It, it will teach you to declare that God did it before and he's going to do it again. How? I don't know, but my faith tells me he's going to do it again. He's going to get me out. He's going to clear the path. He's going to provide. He's going to hold. He's going to sustain. Some of you are battling illnesses. Some of you are, are going through some stuff in relationships and some of you had some ugly conversations and possibly some horrible arguments this week. God was in the midst of it all. God was there. God heard what was said. God saw what was done. God even saw how you reacted and how you felt. He knows all of it. And if we just rest in Him, if we trust in Him, if we allow Him to fight this thing because we can't do it, he will bring us through. Amen? I will not be afraid. And then it says, for you are close beside me. Where is God? Close beside you. If you ever say, and you've heard this before, where is God? It's not that he moved, it's that you moved. God is solid. God is faithful. God is for sure. Amen? God is exactly where he needs to be every minute of every day. It's you and I that waver. It's you and I that come towards him or move away from him. It's you and I that look towards him or look away from him. So you need to pray in the high times when things are good spiritually. I've taught this before. You need to pray, God, be with me so that in those times that I go through dark seasons, you're there with me and my spirit man recognizes it. We, we get in places emotionally that we don't want to speak to people for whatever reason. And guess what? We also do that, that we don't want to speak to God for whatever reasons. Because we're fickle. We're, we're emotional. Tell your neighbor, I think he's talking to you. Please listen to what he's saying. Tap, tap him and say, you're emotional. You're weird. You're strange. Come on, keep tapping. Keep tapping. And, and there's things about you that are quirky, but God loves you. Tell him, but God loves you. Amen? He's faithful. He's beside us. It continues on to say in verse 4, your rod and your staff, they protect and comfort me. Vernon, hold that, that rod staff there. It's in the corner. This was given to me by the council at the time when I was appointed pastor of this church. I'm the shepherd, but this is what God uses. He's our great shepherd. Amen? And this is, hold it up over here so that they could see it online. I don't think they see it. There he is. Well, now we're looking more at Vernon than the cane. That's <laughs> awesome. So this is what the Lord uses to protect us. And this, 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 this is a powerful tool. It's a stick that can, that can push things away, whack things away. It, it's got a hook on the end with a little cobweb, I just noticed. It's got a hook on the end that he can grab the things that the devil's put into your life and pull them off, pull them away. This is what God protects you with. Thank you, Vernon. Amen? Your rod and your staff, they protect and they comfort me. Isn't it good and comforting? That when you're going through some kind of a battle, you have some kind of a weapon nearby, right? I remember when my daughter was little, and of course, she's half Hispanic, mother's Filipina, but the Hispanic side of her, when she was very little, she would look for a chancla to throw at me. It started young. 
And I have a little personality that I like to pick on people, so she'd be back in her little baby seat in the car, tied down, and I would say things to her, and she'd, she'd start looking around in the car, and I'd go, what are you looking for, something to throw at me? She'd take off her little baby crock and throw it at me. It'd be bouncing across the front of the car. It feels good to know that there's a weapon or a tool or something you can use against danger. You and I have this. Say amen. Jesus is with us, his rod, his staff, they protect us and it comforts us. And then we have the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that we need to use against the enemy. That's why we must know his word. Amen? Praise God. Continuing on, and this is where I want you to underline verse 5. This is now the portion of the scripture that talks about communion. You're, you prepare, verse 5, you prepare a feast for me. In the presence of my enemies. We all have those fantasy moments where someone in high school that really bothered you and you run into them 20 years later and, and you almost break out in a big Broadway production in your mind. Oh, I wish I could have just done a tap dance move. Right? Right? And it just turned into a production and how amazing I would have seemed and looked. And people that hated me will now want to be my friends. And I get to now say no. When I was in college and I would goof around with people and they'd go, hi, I, my name is so-and-so. And I'd be in the cafeteria, I've shared this. And they'd, they'd approach the table and I'd go, not accepting friends today, I'm sorry. You think of those moments of, wish, I wish I had the emotional strength and the emotional fortitude to be able to declare and say what I do want, what I don't want. But the truth is most of us live in anxiety and fear most of the time trying to get what little we can get of whatever, someone's attention, of finances, of position, of notoriety, whatever it could be. We fight for these things because the devil is good at trying to make us feel unimportant if you compare yourself to the things and the ways and the achievements and the accomplishments that this world offers, you'll feel small. But if you compare yourself to the Word of God and who God says you are and what you were created for, you will see the value that God has given you. You are a worshiper. You are an intercessor. You are one that has a relationship with God who knows God by name, and guess what? He knows you by name. Hallelujah. You can pray and bring things before the Lord, and he will establish it in your life. And what God puts there, no man can remove. That's why you want God to do it. That's why you want God to be your healer, because no one could take your healing away. That's why you want him to be your provider, because no one can take what God has given you away. That's why you want God to do it in your life, because what he puts in there, what he sets in motion, cannot be removed. Say hallelujah. So it says here in verse 5 that he prepares a feast in the presence of your enemies. And look what the Lord does. You honor me by anointing my head with oil. We're going to do anointing at the end of service before you leave. It'll be a part that I've said before, a part of our communion service. It's important to be anointed. The oil represents the Holy Spirit. And to be anointed means that you are being called and set apart. And you know what you want before you leave this place? What you had when you came in. The mark of God on your life. You want the mark of God on your life. You want every demon force that exists in the pits of hell to know that you are a child of God. Because you know what happens when that's declared? They can't touch you. Amen? They cannot touch you. They can't do a thing to you that you don't let them have access to. So you want your mind under the blood of Christ. You want your spirit man under the blood of Christ. You want your natural man under the blood of Christ. You want your health under the blood of Christ. You want your provisions under the blood of Christ. Say amen. You want everything covered under the blood of Christ. It says in verse 6, Surely your goodness and unfailing love will pursue me all the days of my life. You want those things chasing after you. When you wake up in the morning and you get out of bed and you start your day, you want goodness and unfailing love following you throughout the house. How many of you have a dog or a cat or a kid or an undecisive spouse, whatever, that just follows you around the house? 
That's what you want. Every time you turn around, you want to see goodness and unfailing love of God following you everywhere you go. It, 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 they got your back. They protect you. They look out for you. They're, they're your posse. They're your crew. Amen? Goodness and unfailing love. Always backing you up everywhere you go, in everything you face, and whatever you're going through, goodness and unfailing love are backing you up, standing with you, defending you, showing their presence to your enemies. Say amen. amen. Ugly things come your way, you can say, oh no, I got the goodness and the unfailing love of God in my life. Oh, that's a terrible situation. That, that's, that's an ugly, no, 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 I've got goodness. That looks like goodness. God's going to turn it around. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says he will turn your mourning, your sadness, your depression into dancing. Into a reason to celebrate. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise God. So there's the focus I'm giving you of verse 5. And this is where the power of the Lord's table and communion comes from. For just a couple of minutes with us. In the Old Testament... The communion, the Lord's table, was a very powerful thing. There was the presence of the bread, the presence of the wine, and there was always lamb served with that meal. And it was very ceremonial. It had its processes, its procedures. It had its purposes of the people of the Old Testament that they would face and they would go through. And it was very important to have this meal. And of course, it was all very prophetic of the coming Messiah. You need to be convinced that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. You need to be convinced that Jesus is the Son of God. He is the promised Messiah. You need to realize and understand that the Bible says, and it is true, that there is no other name under heaven by which anyone can be saved but the name of Jesus Christ. All good people don't go to heaven. People with, with good intentions don't go to heaven. Only people that have Jesus go to heaven. And let me tell you, here's what's interesting. There are ugly, mean, rude people that have Jesus, and guess what? They're going to heaven. Some of you just went, oh, thank God I'm going. Oh, thank God I made it in. Amen? You want God to be working on you. Say amen. That's why you're here today. You want God to be working on you, God to be doing a new thing in you, God to be removing old things from you, amen, changing your way of thinking and speaking and behaving and reacting. That's why you're learning about the things of God. And as you get the living word in you, you will, you will be learning these processes and procedures and become a new creature in Christ, amen. The spirit work has been done by the blood of Jesus, but the natural thing needs to be done by us and the Holy Spirit leading us. So Psalm 23 is centered around a shepherd. It begins by saying, the Lord is my shepherd. And then it begins to imply about sheep. Who's the sheep? We're sheep. And you know, sheep are cute and fluffy, and most of us are cute and fluffy. Amen? But sheep are followers. Sheep do whatever the sheep in front of them do. Sheep don't think for themselves. Sheep don't even defend themselves. Sheep don't know how to stay together. And some sheep wander off. And then comes the story of where Jesus left all of the 99 sheep to go find the one that was lost. Say amen. If you're the wandering sheep, praise God, Jesus will come looking for you. And we all wander at some point. And you know what's interesting about sheep? That God compares us to sheep. And you'll hear in political conversations or any kind of intellectual conversation where there's people control happening, and this is what society is all about, this is what media is all about, they'll say, well, people are sheep, and they'll believe whatever's in front of them or whatever they're told. And did you know that when sheep are led to the slaughter, again, they must be led to the slaughter, they don't put up a fight. Do you know that they're walking towards the slaughter, watching the other sheep ahead of them being slaughtered, and they never once think, oh, that's not good. I don't, I don't want to be there and run or bounce off the other way. Sheep just keep coming, saying, so what's going on over here while the other sheep are being slaughtered? And sheep just line up and wait for their turn. 
This is what you and I do. We, we might have degrees and training and skills and uh, titles and accomplishments. And we might think we're some pretty hot stuff, but we're just sheep that follow along with whatever. That's why we need the Spirit of God to guide us and to lead us. That's why we need the Word of God to transform our thinking, to help us focus and see where God is. That's why we must look for God, seek God, and ask God. And he promises, as we read a moment ago, to lead us down the right paths. Did you know that when sheep are being slaughtered and positioned to have their necks sliced, their jugular veins sliced, sheep will sit there and look at the person that is killing them. Without biting, without kicking, without putting up a fight, they just sit there and let the process happen. That's why we need a shepherd. That's why we need Jesus. Because it's either that we are led by God or we are led by ourselves. And the Bible says if you follow yourself, you're following, therefore, then the enemy, Satan. So we need to follow Jesus. So Psalm 23 is all about the shepherd. It's all about implying that we are sheep and that we are needing of the Lord's table. And then it talks about a table that is being prepared for us, and that table is prepared by Jesus. Jesus, on the night before he was crucified and he sat with his disciples, he prepared a table. He made sure there was a room where he and the disciples can go and sit and share a meal. And I've shared this before. That is where Jesus implemented the process of communion in church. The very first one that was hell. God is everywhere, but he does not manifest himself everywhere. God is everywhere, but he doesn't manifest himself everywhere. That's why there are places, and I don't know about you, but I'm, I'm sensitive uh, in, in cultures that are not God-centered. The United States uh, used to be a Christian nation. Did you hear me? Used to be. And there's reports of great decline in the church, great decline in Christian places. There's even a popular Christian channel that has now announced that they will cancel all church services that they broadcast and start bringing in psychologists and therapists to have Christian conversations on mental health. This is what heals. Getting this word in you is what heals. That if you don't get this word with the power that it takes, which is the presence of the Holy Spirit in your life, you're going to read it as a history book. This book will put you to sleep. If you have problems falling asleep, pull out the Bible. On the second line, you're going to be falling asleep. But if you're reading it with spiritual awareness and a revival in your spirit, amen, if you're reading it for the purpose of finding more of Jesus, things will be opened to you that will stimulate and excite your spirit man. And let me tell you, in these last days, church, we need to wake up. Tell your neighbor, wake up. Come on, wake up. We need to wake up. We need to get it together. We need to be hungry for the things of God and the presence of God. We need to be excited when we see God in the midst of the unsaved. People will go to work and You've heard this, you've seen this, maybe it was you, but say an unsaved coworker comes and says, oh my Lord, this morning, this car came this close to taking me out. And you need to take your opportunity and say, that was God's grace and mercy so that you have a chance to receive Jesus. Can I share something with you real quick? And prepare your salvation message to be a 30-second sentence that you speak to someone. And don't feel you need to sit and hover and badger till they get saved. Sometimes it's about dropping a seed and walking away. And trust me, God will do something with that seed. Amen? Just like he'll do something with your generous smile, with your kind gesture, with your sincerity that you may show towards people, people are going to say, that's one nice person that I really want to get to know. And what they're really being attracted to is the presence of God in you that they see but don't realize it's him. You and I are the light of this world. Amen? You and I are the salt of this world. What does that mean? We are flavor flag, baby. Amen? There's no flavor until we show up. Amen? When we show up, the party starts. When we show up, it really gets going. When we show up, life is good. Amen? Yesterday, I had to be with some people that were parents of my daughter's friends, 
and they weren't saved, and they started passing around the little booze and this and little bottles, and, you know, I'm sorry, I was raised in church. I'm like, what, what is that? What are you drinking? Oh, I got a little bit. Of, you want something? No. You, are you, what? No. Did you want? No. Aren't you cold? This will warm you? No. You have to be strong enough to say no. And don't be judgmental, and don't be critical, and don't be hateful. Amen? But just place your standard politely and gently. And let them know that that's not what I need to have a good time. I have plenty of Jesus to see the value of the good stuff around me. I don't need to be numbed because this is the life God gave me. This is, these are the things God has given me to appreciate and to enjoy. And there is value in this that God has put in your life. That which you're facing, that which you have, even if it's a grumpy person, realize that God can make you have a sense of humor towards their grumpiness. And while they're all, hmm, it's Monday, you're all, <laughs> it's Monday, quit being weird. Amen? Because God removes the buttons that trigger you from you. Some of you are praying and praying and praying, hoping and hoping and waiting for that person to change. When God has allowed that person to be there so that you will change. Amen? Tell your neighbor, it's about you changing. Tell them, come on, it's about you changing. Don't worry about me, you work on you, amen, and change. So the communion table is about dying to self. In the Old Testament, like I mentioned, they had the, the bread, the wine, and the lamb meat on the table. In the New Testament, they only had the bread and the wine because Jesus was the lamb. He wasn't on the table, he was at the table. When someone is at the table, they are there with you, partaking of what you're partaking, involved in what you're involved with. This is the God that we serve. He's with us. Tomorrow comes Monday and your alarm's going to go off and you're going to get up to get ready. Jesus is there. So when you wake up, say, thank you, Jesus, for a new day. Amen? I've said this before. You can either come to Monday without a job and you're in panic, or you can come to Monday with a job and be upset about it. But learn to have a good attitude. Realize that God is the provision. God made Jesus the provision. Amen? We have the opportunity of salvation and healing because we have Jesus. Amen? Go ahead and stand up with me for just a moment. And I want uh, Phil, 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 where are you? Phil, come stand there. Vern, come stand there. Get anointing oil. Amen? I was going to read, and I'm going to do that now out of Exodus 12. We're going to prepare to be anointed with oil. The communion, the Lord's table, that happened on the night before Jesus was crucified in the New Testament was a direct physical action and redefining of what happens in the Old Testament, specifically in Exodus chapter 12, verses 1 through 7. And it says, while the Israelites were still in the land of Egypt, the Lord gave the following instructions to Moses and Aaron. In verse 2, he says, from now on, this month will be the first month of the year for you. Announce to the whole community of Israel that on the 10th day of this month, each family must choose a lamb or a young goat for a sacrifice. One animal for each household. Verse 4 says, if a family is too small to eat the whole animal, let them share with another family in the neighborhood. Divide the animal according to the size of each family and how much they can eat. Verse 5, the animal you select must be a one-year-old male, either a sheep or a goat with no defects. And this is all prophetic explaining of who Jesus is. Amen? A male of no defect. And of course, that could only be the Son of God. Verse 6, take special care of this chosen animal until the evening of the 14th day of this first month. Then the whole assembly of the community of Israel must slaughter their lamb or young goat at twilight. Verse 7, they are to take some of the blood and smear it on the sides of the and top of the door frames of the houses where they ate these animals. So the blood must be shed. Amen? And they're to take this blood and they're to brush it or smear it 
around the door frame, on the sides and on the top, never on the bottom, because the blood of Christ is never to be trampled on. Amen? It's always to be honored and respected. And then the Bible continues to explain that on the night of the Passover, and the reason why it was called Passover is because the death angel sent by God would pass over every house and a child would die except for in the home where the blood was seen on the doorposts. Amen? So we want the blood of Christ over us so that the death angel doesn't take us. So that, listen to me, by faith, sickness and disease can't touch you or take you or harm you or hurt you. Amen? So that the devil doesn't have an opportunity to get near you and you be covered and protected by the blood of the Lamb. So when we take communion, and we're going to do that right now, very, very quickly, get your communion cups. Do the kids have them? Do the youth have communion cups? They do? Go ahead and line up along the back there, right here behind this first row. Line up right there. For those of you watching, we brought our, our youth and our kids in for communion. Get the bread, the cracker, the wafer. If you have something at home that you can run into the kitchen quickly and, and get that represents the body of Christ. Jesus was whipped. He was beaten. They whipped him into an inch of his life. And this was all on the night before he was crucified. And the Bible says that by his stripes, by the whippings on his back, we are healed. In Jesus' name. So by faith, it doesn't matter what you're going through and what's happening in your body, in your mind, where, where you may be sick, what your diagnosis may be, you are a child of God, and by faith you need to declare that you are healed. Even as you're scheduled for surgery, even as you're taking medication, even as you're eating healthier, doing exercise, drinking water, going to therapy, continue doing all those things, but by faith as a child of God, you can declare healing over your life. And you begin to say, God, heal me and I thank you for your healing. Do it, God, in Jesus' name. I have faith and confidence in you that you are my healer in the name of Jesus. Close your eyes and hold up the element. Father, we thank you. We thank you that you sent your son to die for our sins. We thank you that Jesus... Being able to call every angel in heaven to come and defend him and protect him and, and remove him, Jesus went through the process. He came with purpose and with reason, and even though he was 100% God, he was also 100% man, and he could have walked away from the process. But Jesus submitted to the plan of God the Father and walked in obedience. And he didn't run from the challenge of death. Keep your eyes closed. How many times do you say, God wouldn't want me to go through this? And you walk out of God's plan and God's will. Jesus could have said, no, 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 it can't be this. It, there's got to be something else. And you know what the Bible tells us? That <clears throat> when he went into the garden and he was praying, he did ask God the Father if there's any other way that this can happen. But even so, Lord, I'll walk in submission. Your will be done, he said. So Jesus, thank you for your willingness to the will of God the Father. God the Father, thank you that you sent your Son that paid for our sins. Thank you, Lord. There was no other way. There's no other way that our sins can be paid for but through the cross of Jesus Christ. We must come to the foot of the cross. We must submit to the Spirit of God. We must be cleansed in the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. The death angel will pass over. So press that bread. Press that cracker. Crack it. Break it in your fingers, in your hand. That is symbolic that the body of Christ was broken for us. Jesus said, do this in remembrance of me. So we remember the beating. We remember the pain, the, the hurt you went through, Jesus, for our healing. You have assured and secured our healing. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on, believer. By faith. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. In the name of Jesus, I am healed. Hallelujah. 
In the name of Jesus, pain go. Condition go now in the name of Jesus. I am healed, hallelujah, hallelujah. by his stripes. Hallelujah. It's been paid for by Jesus. Yes. I am healed. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Partake of the element. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, declare your healing. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm healed in Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. I have faith and confidence in you that you're doing it now in my body and in my mind. In my heart, God, you're doing it in Jesus' name. Healed in Jesus' name. Go ahead and prepare the juice. Open the tab. If you have something at home, you can run and get to be symbolic. Even if it's water, it's fine. Symbolic of the blood of Jesus. Hold up the element and close your eyes. And I want you to picture Jesus on the cross. And we've all seen enough Hollywood movies to see what that potentially could have looked like. And the worst scene you may have ever seen of Jesus dying on the cross, imagine it to be 50 times worse than that, if not more. The hatred that was placed on Jesus. Demonic forces working through the people that Jesus blessed. Society turning on him 100%. His disciples running and hiding and being rejected and sought by the soldiers. So much confusion, so much disillusion, so much mockery, so much denial of who Jesus was. When demonic forces take over a crowd, it becomes very ugly very quickly. And yet Jesus hung on the cross and went through the pain and the process to the point that his flesh cried out, God, why have you forsaken me? So Jesus even had those moments where he gave up in his natural man, but his spirit man continued with the process. He experienced such rejection from people that he helped. And how many of us have helped people that have turned on us and we've become angry and bitter and we've unfriended and blocked and avoided them? But Jesus said instead, forgive them for they know not what they do. Can you and I this morning learn from that? Can we say forgive them? I forgive them because they didn't know what they were doing. They weren't doing it to you. They were doing it to the Jesus in you. Your family didn't do it to you. They did it to the presence of God in you that they cannot stand. And you need to realize that they're lost in confusion and in darkness. They were ignorant. They don't, they don't know what they're doing. But you're the believer. You rise above it. You walk in grace and in mercy as God has offered us. His goodness and His unfailing love, you offer it to them. So that they can see Jesus too. So that they can be saved as well. Our purpose is not to stimulate family arguments and division, but our purpose is to bring our family to Christ. We are now the evangelists of our families. Amen? The Bible also says that if you receive this communion unworthily, meaning that you have not forgiven, you are bringing curses upon yourself. And how many Christians that I've encountered over my years in church that all of a sudden had strange diseases and some were even, as the Bible says, fallen asleep or died because they took communion unworthily. And it's not talked about because it seems outlandish. It seems fanatical, so we don't talk about it. But if it happens and you've seen it, that's what happened. It's in the Bible. It's going to happen as God says it will. So I stand here before you asking you please to forgive so that you can receive the elements worthy and curses cannot be placed on you. Right here, right now, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you how to forgive and to release and to let it go before it snowballs into a negative situation. 
Jesus, teach us how to forgive like you forgave. Jesus, teach us how to release it like you did. Teach us to let it go and to just push it away and no longer let it be a part of my relationships, my family dynamics, my reputation. Don't let it touch me in any way. That people may stand in awe, amazed that I've been able to let it go. And I know that it's only because the Spirit of God taught me how. That let them come and say, what, how did you, what do you, Jesus. And you just say, Jesus. And you no longer show resentment or attitude or roll your eyes or turn away when that person comes in the room. You now walk in love. You walk in love so that you may be healed and you may be saved. You need to say this to yourself. I want to go to heaven. I want to go to heaven. Whatever it takes, whatever I have to do, I want to go to heaven and I don't want anything to keep me out. I don't want any last minute surprises when I'm standing at the gates and my name's not written in the Lamb's book of life. I want my name in that book. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I'm going to put aside yeah. all personal stuff, all personal junk, hallelujah, so that I can walk into heaven rightfully with my head held high as my name is called out and I'm given access to the pearly gates, to the streets of gold, to the presence of Jesus, to the reception table, hallelujah. I want to go to heaven. I don't want anything to hold me back. So God, teach me to forgive and teach me to love. Teach me to walk in it, live in it, be in it all the time. Protect my heart from the kind of hurt that shuts me down. Protect my thinking from the kind of thoughts that cause insecurity and damage me. God, I surrender my life to you, that I be healed by you. And I thank you for the blood shed on the cross, that I may be forgiven by you. No demon in hell can bring it up. No family member or friend can bring it up. And if it's in their memories, that's all where it is. That's the only place it lives, in their memories. It's no longer a part of me. And the Bible says that God will remove us from our sins as far as east is from the west. Amen? The unsaved might not see it or understand it, but you walk in the assurance that it has been forgotten by God. If they bring it up in the room... God doesn't even hear it because it's covered by the blood of Jesus. And you are set free. Hallelujah. You are set free of that sin. You are set free of that sin. It's no longer a part of who you are. You have the opportunity of freedom now in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for the blood of the Lamb that washes away the sins of my life. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Worship. Go ahead and receive the element. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Close your eyes. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. 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 I receive the Lord's table. I receive the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I receive the blood of Christ. I receive forgiveness and I forgive as well in Jesus' name. I receive healing now and restoration in my mind, in my heart, in my body, in the name of Jesus. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Hallelujah. Worthy is your name. Worthy is your name. Worthy, 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 worthy is your name. Oh, I love you, Lord. I worship you. I praise you, God. Come on, worship him freely, believers. Come on, worship Him freely right where you are. Raise a praise unto Jesus. Hallelujah, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, worthy, worthy, worthy is your name. Worthy, 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 worthy is your name. Oh, I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. You are holy. You are mighty. You are strong. Hallelujah, Lord. I love you, God. I love you, God. I love you, God. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Yes, Jesus. Phil, go ahead and anoint Sister Lydia and Rose right where they're seated. Vernon, go ahead. We'll let the children come first. Anoint them with oil. Just anoint, and they'll walk straight past 
go back to their seating or their class where you want them in the name of Jesus come on come on kids keep going walk across walk across hallelujah hallelujah yes Lord yes Lord we anoint you in the name of Jesus we anoint you in the name of Jesus Jesse as they go that way lay hands and bless each of them as they go out in Jesus name hallelujah we anoint you Jesus hallelujah in the name of Jesus thank you Lord thank you Lord thank you Lord and go ahead from back there Elias you can come out this way come around Karen Dan you guys can lead from that way and follow through and they can skip a one or two and come over to Phil on this side come on over come on Isa let's go you can come over on this side Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. There's two here, and then you'll go out that way. And Jesse, as they come through, lay hands. Stacy, you can as well, if you can reach to the ladies. Hallelujah. We anoint you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. We anoint you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You're being set apart. The oil is symbolic of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God is calling you by name. God has chosen you by name. You didn't choose him. He chose you. You didn't find him. He found you. Amen. Hallelujah. We were lost, but now we're found. Glory to your name. Everyone else on this side, come around. Come around. If you still need to be anointed, come around on this side. Receive the anointing. Amen. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Let's sing the chorus of that, Chris. Of the lamb and the word of our testimony, everyone overcome. We will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our the Lord. Hallelujah. What a wonderful teaching that pastor gave to us today. And let's say that prayer right now. I'm going to do it in the NIV version. The Lord is our shepherd. I lack nothing. He makes me lay down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yeah, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for he is with me. His rod and staff comfort me. And the, he prepares a table in the presence of my enemies. He anoints my head with oil, my cup runneth over 
Surely His goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before we go, before I conclude our service, I want to talk to those in need of a Savior and to those who want to renew their relationship with Jesus. Amen. The Bible says in Romans 10, 9, if we declare that Jesus is Lord and we believe in our heart that God raised him from the dead, we are saved. Amen. This is a wonderful promise that Jesus offers to each and every one of us. Amen. He stands at the, the door of your heart knocking, ready to redeem, ready to forgive, to save. Amen. And transform our lives forever and ever. And if you want to give your heart this morning to the Lord, I ask that you pray with me this morning. Amen. Let's get, I ask everyone to bow their head and close their eyes and repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that you died on the cross for my sins. And God raised you from the dead. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Please come into my heart and forgive my sins and lead me in your way. Thank you for your love and your grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. If you said this sincerely, you are a child of God and welcome to the family of God. Amen. If you said this for the first time, please comment yes online. If you said this for the first time here, please let me know. Amen. We love you. Thank you. And you are dismissed. Amen.